So, uh, my name is Angelo Martino from TRT. I'm not the coordinator of this project. Uh, the, this is Reflex project is coordinated by the University of Dresden. <coughs> and um, I'm here to, to do a presentation on, um, yeah, on the project and essentially on, um, yeah, okay. On the, we, we will look uh, um, more in particular on the flexibility uh, of, the, um, of the network and the flexibility that is needed to uh, accomplish the possibility to include uh, renewable in the, in the transport, in, sorry, in the energy system. So the Reflex project is um, focused on, on this to, um, to support the objective of the strategic uh, energy technology plan and to the, for decarbonization of, of Europe, and, uh, but focusing on the uh, specific issue of the flexibility. And um, this will be done using models, uh, otherwise we will not be here in this uh, meeting. And uh, we have uh, also, we have a number of models, so we, have, we are facing similar um, say problems of the other uh, consortia, especially of SETNAV. Uh, we have a uh, and we will go through through it uh, uh, in the in the course of the presentation. We have a number of models that we are putting together in a sort of a soft uh, um, interaction, so building a, a data platform for the coupling of the different models. And the the, the objective is to make an assessment of these uh, different uh, policies that can be uh, designed to deal with the flexibility mm -hmm. issues and to do an assessment considering of different uh, sectors, so economy, environment, uh, and, and social sectors. And, uh, uh, no, this is the right one. So flexibility. And um, what, what is the topic is um, how to, to consider the fact that we have uh, renewable uh, energy sources which are intermittent. We are not constant through time. So as it's shown in this picture, you will have a, a situation where we have more renewable uh, energy available than it needed, and we have a situation where we have uh, less than, uh, than the load of the, of the network. So which are the, the, po the, mm, the policies that can be uh, implemented, how this can develop in the future, considering the technology uh, progress, and uh, how we can uh, deal with the different fields. We can mm, consider uh, how to use energy in, uh, in excess when it's produced more than, by renewable than needed, or how to um, compensate, and we need also um, traditional power plants to fill in the gaps of the, of the renewable energies. So this, uh, um, we will look at, in, we are looking already because the project started exactly one, one year ago, and we will go until uh, for other two more years. So we are looking at these different uh, topics uh, in uh, um, considering uh, different uh, models, a different uh, uh, integrating these different models in, uh, in a coherent way. And uh, here you have uh, this um, sort of, uh, um, say, typical picture of the, of the project that was already designed uh, in the, at the time of the proposal. So we will look at three sectors, the heat, heating sector, the electricity sector, and the mobility sector. And uh, we will look at the um, experience curve, so we will look at the, the technology progress and to see how this can be implemented, can, be, in, can influence the, the different options to be analyzed. And uh, we will look at the, this, the, we mentioned here storage, uh, we mentioned power plants, we mentioned demand response, so the possibility to have the demand side management of, uh, for, uh, so to deal with these flexibilities. And uh, we also mentioned the issue of transmission and uh, of the network. And this in the direction of the uh, decarbonization of the energy system. And, um, sorry, get wrong, okay. This is the, the framework that we, are, uh, that we have built and that we are using. So the core of the framework is this uh, EMS, we call the Energy Modeling System, which is on the, um, on the box, uh, uh, on the south, on the, sorry, down in the, in the picture, where we have this uh, 
different models uh, dealing with the heating sector, electricity, and mobility. And then we have uh, as a feeder for this system uh, experience curve tool, so a, a tool where we, are de we have developed learning curves to look at how costs uh, can uh, change through time of the, for the different technologies. And we have uh, um, the tool that are um, shown in the, in the upside of the, of, the, um, of the slide where we have the tool that we will use to do the final assessment, so the life cycle uh, assessment tool and, um, and the tool that we look at the uh, impact in terms of uh, pollution and concentration of pollutants for the calculation of the external cost. And um, we have this experience curve tool, uh, which has been um, the first, it's a task that more or less already completed. So we have built this experience curve for different technologies. And this takes into account uh, the different characteristics of the technology and also where there are um, say geographical um, potential or uh, where there are constraints due to raw material prices or availability of different um, energy sources. And uh, uh, this will be, uh, will be feeding into the different models. And um, these are the models that we are using. So we have three, uh, sorry, we have uh, these uh, five blocks. And uh, I, we, we have um, the model which is, will deal with the mobility, which is the, the Astra model, which where we have, uh, it's a um, transport integrated model we, with, where we look at the different uh, uh, development of the vehicle fleet and how this, uh, the, the fleet of the, the transport fleet is used for passenger and freight movements for Europe. And, um, so this will be linked uh, with the um, ultra mode, and the um, ultra mode is uh, the model that deals with the electricity uh, transshipment. So the the, the, say the movement of electricity within uh, within Europe, and uh, all these uh, the Astra model and the ultra model will be linked to the forecast, which is the energy demand model, which de deals with the forecasting of mod of energy for all Europe, and uh, uh, there will be also a special module called e-load, which will look at the hourly um, load on the network, uh, on the electricity network. And uh, we have uh, two other models, uh, which uh, one is related to the heating, and, uh, and one is related to um, the management of capacity, the problem of capacity, and it's an agent-based model, the power ace. Um, that this will complement the, uh, the ultra mode. And um, then we have uh, these tools that are used for the as assessment of the impacts, uh, which are the LSA tool, which is the um, life cycle analysis. And, uh, and the other one, it's uh, the model that is um, calculating the environmental cost and is calculating in terms uh, of uh, emissions, concentration of different pollutants, uh, and uh, um, lo looking also at the health impact of these uh, policies. And how do, do we put together all these models? So we, have, uh, we are uh, dealing with similar problems of SETNAV. So we have uh, a modeling platform, uh, which is uh, called uh, um, Data Warehouse and where we exchange, where we put all the data that are exchanged between the models. And the approach is to go for a, a soft uh, linkage between the models, not, mm, or it partly soft and partly hard in a sense that some of these uh, connections will be made uh, automatic, but there is no, uh, not, no uh, say proper integration of the models. So models are uh, built by different partners uh, and are developed by different partners, so there is also different uh, teams involved. And, but uh, we have common assumptions for, this, uh, for these models, and we also have uh, uh, common scenarios. And this is, uh, sorry, I always go in the wrong direction. Okay, so these are the scenarios that we have developed, that we are uh, preparing, assuming that we will go for decarbonization of the 
energy system, we need to have a, a higher share of renewables in the, in the network. So we have uh, um, designed two different scenarios. One is called uh, moderated reflex, and the other one is called uh, high reflex, and uh, um, resflex, so it's uh, between the acronym of the project and the uh, renewable energy. And um, so we will look at this scenario in terms of uh, percentage of uh, renewable uh, in the system. But also, if you can see, there are two, um, two boxes. On the, um, on the high side, we have the centralized system. And on the other side, we have a decentralized system. So we will look also at different uh, uh, approaches in how the energy is managed and how the system will, uh, will uh, develop. In the uh, centralized system, we will have a, a sort of continuation of the system that we have now. So we have a big, uh, big plants, big power plants, uh, big photovoltaic uh, in plants. And this means that we also have uh, the need to invest on the network, on the grid, to, to make it possible to have exchanges of um, energy sources between the different countries, between the different regions. And uh, in decentralized scenario, we think uh, of a different situation where we have uh, a more uh, develop, much more development of uh, what is called the prosumers, so the people that uh, produce their own electricity when the photovoltaics on the rooftop, and all the district uh, heating systems. So um, these two scenarios are quite uh, extreme, of course. One is uh, full uh, centralization, the other one is full decentralization. But of course, these are the practice in the modeling no? to, to look at uh, contexts that are significantly different and look uh, at what, what can be the impact. So what, is, uh, um, what has been developed, uh, and we have already um, prepared also uh, some uh, deliver deliverables for this, but also some policy, what we call policy brief. This is available on the, on the website. So there are short notes for stakeholders to discuss uh, some of these problems. And we have one on these two scenarios to uh, explain the, the differences. And, um, and, and therefore, these are the scenarios that will be tested through the modeling system. And the last, uh, again wrong, the last uh, uh, slide on the scenarios is this one where we show more or less where we are in the description of this uh, and the characteristics of this scenario. So we, we have the moderate scenario and the high, uh, high um, renewable scenario. The moderate is yellow, the other one is green. And uh, as you can see, for the general framework conditions, they are on more or less on the same line, population and um, economic growth or fossil fuel price, they, are, they assume the same, uh, the same values. And these are the reference figures that we will use for, um, for this, uh, that we are using already for the models. When they start to difference, for example, on the CO2 price, and we assume there will be a, a highest CO2 price for, uh, for the high renewable. And also they differ when uh, we go to the policy targets uh, in terms of uh, reduction of uh, CO2 and also in terms of uh, share of uh, um, renewables and the energy efficiency. Um, the team, the team that is doing the Reflex project is full of German partners, like uh, most of the other projects. So we have uh, the, the leaders are the University of Dresden, but we have also uh, Germans from uh, uh, Karlsruhe University and Fraunhofer Institute for um, Innovation and System Innovation, also in Karlsruhe. We have ISA Square, which is another spin-off of uh, ISI, again in Karlsruhe. Then we have a German-speaking Swiss partner, the TEP, <laughs> and, uh, and uh, we have then uh, a Swedish partner, the University of Stockholm, uh, the Polish partner from Krakow, and uh, TRT from, from Italy. And um, from Netherlands. Sorry, yes, yes, I forgot, <laughs> uh, I forgot the Utrecht University from Netherlands. They are responsible for the learning curves. And uh, sorry, sorry for this. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. And I'm done. With okay. <laughs> <laughs>
this the the experience curve tool you talked about um, quite interesting um, because it links to the to the big problem of trying to to link the models with uh, the part of technology innovation. So my question is: uh, first of all, is w will the tool be and its features and how it looks like be available? And then uh, two more questions about the approach. So one is um, how with which uh, rationale you you came to the to the choice of the key technologies uh, for which you would analyze the, the experience curve. And the second question is at which point of your approach with technology innovation you included uh, stakeholders? Okay, so and um um, the tool, the, sorry, the, we call this tool, in reality, these are learning curves. These are, um, how do you say, data that we pro that have been produced. And, um, and so these are not mm, prepared in a specific in interface or something like this. But these um, learning curves have been already uh, prepared because these were, these are one, these were one of the first, um, um, task of the project, and uh, and they will feed the uh, the other models, and of course uh, this information will be available because this will be a deliverable of the project, and it's already. I'm not sure that the, at the which level of uh, approval is in through the to the process, but it's uh, it's already prepared, and um, the. Um, the preparation of these uh, learning curves involved uh, the interaction with stakeholders. There were uh, a specific um, stakeholder workshop uh, last uh, a few months ago, and um, and the, the 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 technologies that have been selected are linked to the various uh, field of uh, interest of the project in the, in the sense of of the modeling that we are doing in the project. So there is a. Um, technologies related to the um, mobility system, so automotive system, uh, but also other technologies related to uh, to the transport system, technologies related to the heating, and uh, and also technologies in general related to the uh, industrial production. So these were the the, the driving element for the selection of this uh, of these topics. Oh yeah, that's working. Hi, uh, Valentin Berch from the Economic and Social Research Institute in Dublin. I have a question around your scenarios. Um, first of all, uh, do you plan to make them openly available beyond those high-level descriptions, so in terms of detailed data assumptions? And also, I was wondering in relation to the scenarios, um, you, you had that distinction between centralized and decentralized. Is that really, it, it gave the impression of being kind of a binary decision um, or is it rather uh, maybe possible to study what, what an optimal level of decentralization could be and would you maybe consider introducing some further scenarios there? Um, yes, the, 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 the document uh, again will be, there is a deliverable which is already uh, again uh, already prepared so I assume that will be uh, available very soon and um, in terms of, uh, it's true, these are quite extreme. Um, in the analysis that we will do for uh, the policy recommendation and the testing of the, we will try to, to see which of the, for example, which of the characteristics of the decentralized approach can be better combined in order to get better results. But, um, but the definition of this uh, scenario is useful to have the, the, the different model running Together, so together, sorry, in parallel, but with the same uh, um, assumptions and the same uh, um, indi and same indications. But once that this is done, of course, uh, in the in the policy analysis, we will have to to think how we can better uh, fine tune some of the uh, e extreme assumptions that we have made. But the, 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 the idea to work with this decentralized scenario is also to test something which is probably 
less studied and more difficult to, to understand because it's a behavioral matter on how much you will have this development of uh, um, local uh, energy production or um, and this for example we assume that if you have more um, local energy production at the local level decentralized level you can have also more easy better system for uh, recharging your vehicles because you have a more availability also at home or uh, in other places so we we link to this or for example also a different penetration of electric vehicles uh, in the two, two different scenarios because in one case you have a better infrastructure or more spread infrastructure in the other one you have a you rely on the system and then you have in, probably recharging only in some spots uh, in uh, in central part of the city or uh, something like that. But of course, this will be fine-tuned in the course of the process. Yeah, just an addition uh, as being one of these, a lot of German partners in that project. <laughs> um, the, it's not a really binary decision between central completely centralized uh, or decentralized world, but it's more like two trends. Uh, in the first trend, we have more offshore wind production, uh, a bit less rooftop PV, but still uh, at least the level of today or the, even a bit more. And in the decentralized scenario, we will have a stronger trend to rooftop PV. So. Um, just one one backup question to that, because uh, we are facing the same things when we're doing uh, decentral and central scenarios. But what is coming out when when you're trying to go to the eighty ninety percent? Do you have still the the space to have decentral, or don't you have all the rooftops that you, that are available already in there? And then the decentral scenario is nothing else than the central scenario because y you have to use all the space. Um, yeah, maybe in that case, a rooftop uh, PV is a bit simplification of that scenario. We mean more or less uh, rooftop PV plus uh, small-scale PV parks on the ground at the distribution level, which do not uh, has to be where the energy has not to be transported via the transmission line to a long distances. So. It's a bit a grid-related uh, question in that uh, specific case. In, in the one, uh, in the centralized scenario, we will have maybe the grid more congested, and so questions around market design arise in that direction. In the other, so more decentralized production with, um, I would say, um, yeah, less transport need maybe for uh, the electricity, and. Yeah. So it's not uh, really fixing that potential only by the rooftops, but I, to my opinion, even in Germany, we have still had a lot of potential which is not exploited. <laughs> so, hmm? yeah, and but it's not only this disinterest; it's not limited only to rooftop. Yes, he's right. Probably I mentioned only rooftops, but the idea is to have a. In one case, when you have a centralized scenario, you need to invest on the grid in order to make it possible to move energy from one side to the other. And you probably will have better cost optimization because large plants will have a lower cost. But in the other sense, you will, in the other scenario, you will have a more decentralized production, which can be a combination of rooftops, small plants, less investment for the grid because you need the, the, the various regions can be more uh, um, independent for this or they, can, they need less exchange, but you will have probably uh, higher cost because you will have less uh, uh, economies of scale. And these are the issues that are uh, going to be uh, investigated in the, in the project. I think you're oh, uh, hello, Pauline, UCC. I'm not a German partner. Um, <laughs> Do you plan to compare and contrast your results to exist, existing studies? For example, the Commission have very similar scenarios published under their 2050 low-carbon strategy. 
Yep. Yeah. And uh, and most of many inputs for the our scenarios come from this uh, low carbon strategy of the uh, of the Commission. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, the, <clears throat> sorry. Then I also have a question, you know, to continue on this scenario discussion. In fact, the scenario describes um, a future state of the system. And in principle, I understand you use that as an assumption and, uh, and then it becomes an input into the model. But surely, you know, the state of a system, y you would like that to be output of a model, not input. And um, so my question really is, how do you link this to concrete policy measures that will lead to that future state that is input into your model? I, I would like to see a model where, you know, these assumptions are in fact computed by the model and not uh, that you have to impose as input. I think it's a bit, it's about... It, it's a combination of the of the two things because some of this uh, you you use model also what we was, was discussed this morning to as a what if so what happens if there is a investment in this direction or what happens if there is investment in the other direction so probably the the word scenarios can be a bit misleading but what I illustrated here are a sort of um, external trends that we will test into the model to see which uh, which is then the output for the for the functioning of the energy system but the fact that is in investing in one direction or like for example to have a centralized plants or to have a um, you say decentralized approach is something um, it's uh, exogenous in uh, in in our model so it's something that is an input that and then on the basis of this input we can see what what are the the consequences, but the mo the, the various models are, I mm, say, from analyzing these results, you can then think which is the best, uh, uh, the best combination. But um, but the, the, I mean, uh, the, the, some of these elements of the characteristics of the scenarios are elements which are uh, exogenous to the to the model, so therefore can only be input from from the user or for the modeler. Yes, but the policy, policy measures can... Yes, yes. But this is, this is what the model, the model do. The, the so, but maybe the question, what would it take for a model to generate an output which is either more centralized or more decentralized depending on a policy input that you put into the model? <laughs> Yes, but I think from for the centralized and decentralized uh, option, uh, it's uh, it's something that goes beyond the, the the capabilities of this of these models because these are models related to uh, specific uh, themes and, and this these are choices that goes into the um, more general model that depends on the budget of the countries on the approach of the of the. On the, also the behavior development and all these things. So I don't know how much this can be actually predicted by a model. And uh, it seems to me that it's uh, too much to ask uh, to a modeling. Um, you can make some assumptions and test uh, according to the models, which are the reactions, but you cannot uh, rely on the model to for a big, uh, uh, how do you say, big questions like this one or big topics like this one <laughs> or maybe you have a different opinion okay um uh so just uh, it's kind of critical and uh, uh are you really sure you can answer uh, or analyze the very centralized and decentralized worlds with the same set of models um and i'm not saying you can't but maybe that's something that we can discuss in one of the focus groups tomorrow because I think that's kind of a critical issue that we might all be interested in. Yep, uh, sure. This is quick. <laughs>
Okay. <laughs> that was an easy answer. <laughs> but uh, I think uh, now, uh, with respect of time, uh, we've uh, discussed quite a bit about uh, this project. Many thanks. Another round of applause for... Uh,